Luis, can you see the slideshow all right? I sure can. Thank you for checking. All right, good deal. And you can hear me? I can hear you clear. Can you hear me clear? Yep. Awesome. Yeah, but that doesn't have them if it's Wi-Fi it doesn't work.
John, I see your uh, Broncos in your Bronco in the back there. That is actually my Bronco as it rolled oh, off I, the assembly line. I, that's what I thought. Of. I see that. I don't think I've seen that one yet. So nice. It's in a train car somewhere between Illinois and here right now. <laughs> well, hopefully it gets her. <laughs> With my hits. luck, it's going to get here tomorrow. Right in time for the snowstorm. Yeah, it could be very well be. <laughs> but I have the sale of my Explorer is set for Monday. Well, you're on a tight schedule there. You might be uh, Ubering it or something. <laughs> I've got I've got my daughter's car, so I still have transportation, and she doesn't have her license yet. She's still on her permit. Oh, well, then you're safe. So I can get I can get by for a few days on her car if need be. Yep. <clears throat> but the Explorer sold in 45 minutes. Oh, well, there's the demand for used cars. Unbelievable. I wish I had a lot full of them. <laughs> the used car market is hot. Yeah. In the last six months, the blue book on my Explorer went up $5,000. Perfect time to get rid of it. <laughs> yeah. Andrew. Hello there, Dale. It is just about time. We're going to give people another minute or two to get settled in before we start. Sure. We can go ahead and get started here. Looks like people have made their way in. Uh, thank all of you for coming to the open house. Uh, my name's Alan Maxwell, and I'm here with Luis Flores, and we work with Ram Ramsey County Public Works. Uh, we're here to talk about our upcoming Hugo Road resurfacing project. So, for those of you that are new to Microsoft Teams, the tools can be found in the upper right hand portion of your Teams window uh, next to the red leave button. And while we discuss the project, uh, we're going to have the microphones muted. Uh, we would ask that if you have any questions, please feel free to type them into the chat box. Uh, that can be found in the tools bar. The second one from your left there is shown on this slide. And when. And we will answer questions that were asked in the chat box following our presentation. Uh, after that, we will open up the mics for any additional questions that you all might have. So 
So my role with Ramsey County is a project manager and I have been overseeing the design of our Hugo Road improvements. I'll let Luis introduce himself. Thanks, Alan. My name is Luis Flores. I work uh, in traffic, but I also co-manage the pavement preservation um, system for Ramsey County. Thank you, Luis. Uh, we're also joined by Dale Reed, White Bear Township Public Works Supervisor, uh, as well as other county and township staff uh, that have been involved with the project so far. And do any of you want to introduce yourselves as well? Dale Reed, the Public Works Director with White Bear Township, uh, just working with the county team on the design and review and such so far. And then I'm John Mazzatello. I'm the Deputy Director of Public Works for Ramsey County. The project managers that oversee all of our design and construction projects like this one are all part of my staff. And I've been in contact with some of the residents over the past several months about issues on Hugo Road. So nice to meet everybody. Well, thank you guys. Um, this presentation is outlined on this slide and Luis and I will walk you through an overview of the project, its need and the design considerations that we have come to at this point. So a quick overview of the project. We'll, we will be looking to resurface Hugo Road from Park Avenue to County Road J and this will cover roughly 1.7 miles of roadway. There is a relatively small amount of traffic that uses Hugo Road, about 930 vehicles per day, and that is compared to around 4,000 vehicles per day that use Otter Lake Road further west. The road is signed for 30 miles per hour south of the boat launch, and 40 miles per hour north of the boat launch. Uh, Hugo Road in this area runs parallel to Highway 61 with the railroad running in between Hugo Road and Highway 61. As I'm sure you're all aware, the main need for this project will be to restore the surface to a good condition. Uh, Hugo Road currently has severe potholing, cracking and crumbling pavement as shown on this slide, as well as standing water in areas which continues to worsen the pavement. With the last resurfacing project taking place between 1997 and 2000, uh, Hugo Road has lived out its design life and it is in need of a project now. For this resurfacing project, improvements will be paid for using the county gas tax and county wheelage tax dollars, which means no homeowners will be assessed for as part of this project. Prior to our project, the township will be replacing water main from Taylor Avenue to Gaston Avenue as part of their own project. And following the township's improvements, we plan to resurface Hugo Road using a full depth reclamation process. This is the same process that was used on County Road H2 last year in 2020 from Centerville Road to Bald Eagle Boulevard. This includes lowering the gate valves and manholes, grinding up the existing blacktop pavement and mixing it with the underlying base material. This mix will will add strength to the base of the roadway and the contractor will come in and reshape the base to form the crown of the road and haul away any excess material left over from the site. Afterwards, the gate valves and manholes will be raised to the new surface and the road will be repaved and restriped. The shoulders and side slopes will also be regraded to drain water to the ditch and drain tile will be added in areas to help facilitate that drainage. 
The end result will leave Hugo Road with two 11 foot lanes with one foot of paved shoulder and three feet of gravel shoulder on either side. And currently the lanes on Hugo Road vary from 11 feet to 12 feet, sometimes larger, with irregular shoulder widths. Uh, traffic studies have shown that by striping the narrower travel lanes, traffic speed can be reduced as the confined perception makes the driver want to slow down. So by striping 11 foot lanes on Hugo Road, we're hoping to see a reduction in speeding overall. And our goal will be to widen the gravel shoulders to three feet to allow more room for walkers and bikers on the side of the road. However, we recognize that towards the middle of the project where the roadway gets pinched between the lake and the railroad, uh, widening will not be possible, but it will be provided when able. Construction is scheduled to begin in late summer or fall of 2022, and the project should take between six to eight weeks once it begins, and it will remain open to local traffic during that time. All other traffic will be detoured to Highway 61 while improvements are being made, and we will be updating our project, our project webpage regularly, and this will be the best place for you to find any new information about the project. With that, I will pass it over to Luis to discuss other design considerations that we had during the project design. Thank you. Thanks, Alan. Um, so additional considerations that went into this project uh, involved the Bruce Vento Trail. As you may know, the Bruce Vento Trail is a 13 mile corridor uh, that starts in St. Paul, seven miles of which were worked on in 2005. So to be clear, the Bruce Vento Trail is a long term project about a decade out and uh, alternatives are still being studied. In the short term, due to the crumbling pavement at Hugo Road, uh, this resurfacing project will be implemented next year. Uh, a link with more information uh, on your bottom left there uh, will be copied to the chat box. Another uh, consideration that was looked at uh, as part of this project was the Bald Eagle boat launch. Uh, currently, the entrance is only for southbound traffic coming from the north. As the image shows, the existing signage which prohibits left turns for northbound traffic and right turns for exi exiting traffic from the boat launch will remain in place. Uh, as will two way traffic uh, on Hugo Road after this project is completed. Uh, additional considerations uh, looked at as uh, part of this project were the parking areas. From Buffalo Street to County Road J, there are currently six northbound no boat trailer parking signs, as well as five southbound ones. In addition, there are 13 northbound and 13 southbound no parking signs. When combined with this being a 1.7 mile long project, uh, that's about one no parking or no boat trailer parking sign each direction every tenth of a mile. In locations with no boat trailer parking signs, residents are allowed to park. And as part of this project, gravel shouldering will be added to define these parking areas. Also, the sign near uh, Buffalo and Hugo Road uh, that reads no access to boat launch will remain in place. So as an example of uh, past uh, full depth reclamation projects, uh, here is Marshall Avenue from Snelling Avenue to Lexington Parkway, which took place in 2014. So on the left side, you see the before picture has the uh, alligator cracking and potholing, and then to the right, uh, the bike lanes as well as parking have been marked and defined. More recently, uh, we have this project from last year along Otter Lake Road from Highway 96 to Schooneman Road in White Bear Township. Uh, it shows an improvement from visible, visible crack seals and repairs on the top, the before picture, to a smooth pavement as uh, seen on the bottom part, the after photo. And then finally, as an example uh, of past projects, this is from uh, County Road H2 from Center Centerville Road to Bald Eagle Boulevard. It was implemented uh, last year as well. Um, on the top photo, you see the cracking and, and faded paint as well as uh, other pavement failures. Uh, the project uh, resurfaced the pavement, updated markings, and uh, the north uh, pet ramps at this intersection, which is uh, Cottage Road and County Road H2, uh, were also updated. So to summarize, um, the Hugo Road resurfacing project will take place in the summer and fall of next year. 
and it's intended to address several, uh, several road failures, as discussed. This project is funded through gas and wheelage tax, and there will be no property assessments. All signage at the boat launch entrance will remain in place, as will the no parking and no boat trailer parking signage. And two-way traffic will also remain in place after this project is completed. A link with more information uh, on this project uh, will be provided in the next slide, and uh, it'll be put in the chat box as well. And with that, I, I thank you, and I uh, welcome uh, any questions and, and comments you might have. All right, I'm just going to look through the chat box here, see what we have. Beth's got her hand raised, so you can be, uh, unmute her mic. She's not able to. Gotcha. I believe we unmuted. Let's try it again. And now uh, on your end, uh, Beth, if you could unmute. Sorry about that. There we go. No worries. I have a question for you. I noticed on the postcard it said the road was going to be replaced from Park um, to Hugo. Hugo and I'm, I'm confused because Park to Buffalo was already redone. Um, Buffalo up to Taylor has not. Is it strictly a, a Hugo Road project? Because that's not what the postcard says. <laughs> Sorry, Beth, I'm fighting teams a little bit here, trying to get to a good overview slide here for you. But <laughs> there we go. All right, so the limits are shown here in the red. And we are coming around the corner just to doing that tail end of park. Um, but you're saying that more recently the area between Buffalo and park has been redone. Buffalo down, down the park. Hang on a sec, there's park on two ends there. So I don't think on the lake, on the lake, because um, Buffalo up to Taylor didn't get done when the rest of the boulevard did. Sorry, Beth, it's a little hard to hard to hear you, but are you talking about this area? Can you see my mouse know, on the screen? I'm, I, I'm mistake, I guess when you said park, I was thinking on the south end of park rather than the north end. And I can see, you know, I can see your project now. I was thinking it was okay. park that touches on Bald Eagle Boulevard, which goes up to Taylor Street, East Bald Eagle Boulevard. Oh, gotcha. That hasn't been done yet. Hmm. Uh, no, I believe that the Taylor Street that we're part that we're talking about is somewhere in here, we're talking about our Taylor to Gaston water main improvements, yep. and it will be. Yep, just all the way through here along the extents of Hugo up until the county line. Are you also going to replace Jay. the um, water pipes on Hugo Road? So the township is going to get in and do some repairs from Taylor to Gaston, and maybe Dale would be a better yeah. person to answer that question. Yeah, we're going to, Beth, we're going to replace that section between Taylor and Gaston. We've had, I want to say, nine breaks. I got to make sure. No. So no. I, I want to make sure that we address that section with new piping and valves. So we do. There's one home that serves, and the gentleman's very, been very patient. I want to make sure we get it addressed with this project, so we don't go tearing up a freshly redone road. Uh, exactly. That's what I was wondering. On Hugo Road, they're having problems too, aren't they? Um, north of that, and uh, is what you're saying, Beth? I think so. Yeah. Yeah, I I don't have a lot. I don't have, and I've been there oh, almost twelve. We haven't had any since, but I I and I don't have any records of any north end, and I really don't see any utility patches there. So I I, I don't believe they've had many based on the records. Okay. 
I know I, I see some guy commenting a lot on next door that there's always something going. His name is Stephen said if that helps. Yeah. Yeah. No, and I, I believe I, I I believe I know the gentleman that has been commenting and I hope we're addressing his concerns. Thanks, Dale. Thank yep. you. That was a nice presentation, guys. Thank you. Appreciate that. Uh, I see a couple of comments in the in the chat here, so I will walk through those and then it looks like Bill has his hand raised. Um, Mike asks, will the road be extending into existing yards? Um, no, Mike, that's not the plan. Um, the existing road width is anywhere from uh, 20, 22 feet, 25 feet, 26 feet of blacktop with some shouldering on the sides and we're looking to stay within that it's really more of a maintenance project that's going to take out the bad that's there and put in the new um, trying to minimize impacts outside of the roadway and then i see a question from tim uh, we need to consider traffic calming techniques um yep um certainly tim people uh like to speed on the roads whenever they can and part of our strategy here with the traffic calming techniques is that we're going to be have our 11 foot lanes striped and so currently we have a center line stripe with no outside striping uh, we're going to be adding that stripe on the outside and that confined lane width has been shown to reduce traffic speeds but with the type of project that this is uh, being one of our annual maintenance projects uh, really um, beyond that uh, we're not looking to do anything else it's a pretty simple straightforward replace the bad with the good kind of a project oh, I, I can unmute bill uh... So yeah. I think he's he's been waiting a little while, so. Yep. Okay, and now patience, you, Bill. And now you're now you're muted on. All right, we hit it at the same time, Louise. Yeah. <laughs> now I have I've unmuted you. Now you can unmute yourself. Yeah, I won't touch it anymore. Can you guys hear me? Yes. All right. Good. Yes. So I got a couple of questions. So I, I hesitate to call them storm sewers, but we kind of have those <laughs> where I live that are more like just open manhole <laughs> covers with the grading over them. They're not really curbed. I'm assuming you guys aren't touching those. They're just going to stay as they are. Because they're set back off the road about five feet. I'm at 5583 Hugo, which is just like three quarters between Buffalo and a little lower than that, <laughs> where you're pointing. <laughs> More, But I'm assuming that's out of scope. Uh, yeah, good question, Bill. And yeah, we're not looking to go that far outside of the road bed. We're really trying to keep it within the the pavement section where we can. And um, the yes, drain tile. Answer. Yep. Yeah, it, it drains into the inlet that goes into the bald eagle today. Uh, some of those inlets look like they're right next to your guys' houses and we're uh, they're, to... they're they're no, they're they're more like five feet off the road today. Okay. Like on the other side of the utility poles. So like okay. if you have a you have a utility pole on the west side of the road, then there's like about a foot and then you get into the then there's a giant like I said it's just a, it's just a round grate that's open. Right. Um another question I had was around so the parking rules aren't going to change on the road today so you know for entertaining and we have people that want to stay you know we can park their car on the other side of the street on the east side of Wal or the west side of Bald or west side of Hugo excuse me correct as long as they're not have a boat trailer or <laughs> something like that right no okay. the boat trailer parking signs yeah, are that's, going to continue yep. and uh, we are going to be adding some gravel shouldering on the sides of the road. That's to... good because we get a lot of standing water over in front of my house. So, yeah. did you mean did you mean the east side of Hugo or, or did you mean the west? Just just verifying, Bill. I'm sorry, I'd be the east side of Hugo because the west side of Hugo is where the houses that, are. That's what yeah. I thought. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Okay. okay. Um, and have... I agree... go ahead. I'm sorry. No, I wasn't asking if you had anything else. So go ahead. I do. I have a couple other ones. So I agree with Tim around the speed monitoring. 
as crappy a road as Hugo is today, it's a built-in speed bump continually for the whole 1.7 miles. And I'm concerned today because you already get people that can't seem to control themselves on uh, the unbelievably un unlevel service that is on Hugo today. And if we smooth that out, it's just going to become even faster. Um, I mean, has there been any thoughts around putting up speed monitoring signs? I know we have them on the south side of the lake. I've seen them other places where, you know, it, it, it tags your miles per hour and flashes at you if you're, you're going over it. Is there, any, is there any thought about putting something like that in to at least try to help slow things down? Because that's one of the major concerns we have about resurfacing is that it, it's, it's, it's going to take the natural speed bumps out and just cause people to drive even faster. Right. That, that's a good question, Bill, um, or good comment, rather. And yeah, I believe that the, um, the solar paneled speed signs are something that we can look into and consider. Um, they are on the south side and I think on the north side, too. Um, mm -hmm. And so the striping is something that we're planning to do corridor wide to try and get that narrow perception and get people to slow down in speeding. If if there's a 100% way that I could guarantee no speeding no, on a road, I'd love to design it. No. But yeah. unfortunately, letting the bituminous road become a gravel road uh, isn't a... No, I, I know it's not an option, trust me. <laughs> yeah, I know. I'm just yeah. trying to think of other things. I, mean, I know we can't put speed bumps in because it messes with plowing and everything else. But just right. I, don't, I, I think those signs do impact drivers when it's flashing at them that they're going over the speed limit. So... Okay. In my opinion, I don't have any yeah. proof of that. And then, um, you know, I, 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 I can offer a little bit more on that topic, if you'd like, John, sure. John Pesatello. There have been a number of studies, and I personally participated in one when I worked for a municipality in the Twin Cities. We did a pre-construction and a post-construction speed assessment on a project where we narrowed the lanes from 12 feet to 11 feet. And even with the brand new pavement, the average speed dropped by about four miles an hour. Oh, that's good. Just news. from having that narrowing done. Okay. So we can do some assessments post construction and see what the speed is and make adjustments from there. I, I they have done some speed studies on Hugo, yeah. I know in the past, because I this this subject came up in the in the, the trail uh, open house as well. That, you know concerned about speed on Hugo Road and, mm -hmm. you know, and a trail right next to it, which is my last conversation or last piece. And I'll shut up. So someone else has a chance <laughs> to talk is I hope you guys do work with the, the Vento trail people because your comment was widen when possible. There's parts that are impossible to widen. There's a spot where there's a utility pole and a, and a uh, fire hydrant. Uh, you could probably squeeze your road through there and it's going to be like right on top of each other but I don't see how you put a six foot trail in there. <laughs> so yeah, anything you guys can do. Cause I mean, I'm not against the trail. I'm just against the trail. If it's going to mean diverting people onto the road when they've been on a trail and that's just not safe. But I, I, I like the fact that you guys are working with the, uh, the Vento trail people. And I know it's a long time out, but that's my biggest concern on that is the safety of walkers and bikers that there's parts of the road today that I don't see how you can physically fit in a, a six foot wide trail and a road oh and a two-way road let me rephrase that a one-way road maybe <laughs> yes. well you're not you're not wrong bill and yep our park our parks department is heading up the bruce vento trail project it's early in its design stages and certainly we're all going to be talking together over the next several years while we figure out what the best possibility for uh hugo road is in terms of trail and um, and for now, we will we'll do what we can with the pavement that we have. Yep. So I okay. you know I've seen hands raised for a while here. I want yeah, I'm to... gonna. Yep. Thank you very much yeah. for your time. Yep. And, and Bill, you. as though as that process continues with trail, we're gonna have the affected property owners, area residents involved in that process. Here, Tim, I'm going to unmute you. Uh, go ahead and unmute yourself, and then Beth, I will come back to you. Uh, I think you're still unmuted, you, Tim. You're still you muted. Try? There. Is that? Uh, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you now. 
OK, great. Uh, I, I want to follow up on the idea of traffic calming. Um, it seems to me to be a great opportunity to instill some type of traffic calming to uh, reduce speeds. Um, traffic calming really is uh, uh, a lower cost, uh, low design um, you know, technique to reduce speeds, to perhaps reduce the number of vehicles on the road, also make it safer, slower. I mean, simple things like, I think somebody brought up uh, uh, median islands, island gardens uh, can be in place. You can do a slight chicane. Hugo Road does have a design that is a very straight, uh, wide strip that people tend to want to accelerate down. Um, it seems to be a great opportunity to put um, island gardens, median gardens. You could do a chicane, a little uh, speed uh, curve type of thing. Uh, narrowing traffic lanes is a traffic calming technique. That's great. I think it's absolutely a great opportunity to add additional, um, could be uh, bulbs, there are lane chokers, there are neck downs, a number of techniques that could be, again, low cost, um, low design to slow down vehicles. I think those are great ideas and it's things we've obviously looked into, but the constraints here as part of this project, um, you know, the right of way and the, the amount of space we have to work with is, is not does not permit for that to happen. I apologize for my camera keeps going on out and coming back in for some reason. So so as part of this project, it'll be mostly resurfacing and everything else we talked about. But I am interested uh, to come back and, and do a speed study um, just to check what our speeds out are out there. And I'll also comment that not that this makes it OK, but speeding has been going up just all over the place. Uh, and I think if you've been out on the road in, in any road, it's just something you we're just seeing everywhere uh, something that's being talked about as, as part of workshops that I go to and, and everything else. But um, I could definitely look into where uh, we could do any traffic calming, but it's not uh, other than uh, narrowing the lanes. Um, it, it's just not in the scope of this project, uh, but it's something we're going to keep looking at, of course. And, and just clarify for me why it's not in the scope of the project, because it's an annual maintenance project or is it cost? Or is it design issues? Yes. All of, the, so, all of the above. Yep. So this is part of our annual maintenance project. It's one of six or seven other projects that we have going on now. And the the ultimate goal will be to implement something in terms with the Bruce Vento Trail um, to okay, get there. It's yeah, just that the pavement gonna, can't last until I'm going to interrupt long. you. Though. I'm going to go back to the annual maintenance project um, concern. Uh, I assume H2 improvement was also an annual maintenance project. Is that correct? You know, maybe if somebody else wants to field that, I actually started with the county after that project was completed. Yes, that was part of the same program. Okay, uh, regardless of what type of program it is, I think there was a tremendous missed opportunity on H2 also to instill some type of traffic calming which could have been a, a, a bump outs, um, could have been median islands. Um, so clarify to me what the right of way is currently on Hugo Road. Let's say at the widest point, what's the current right of way, if I can ask? At the widest point? I'm yep. not sure what the widest point is, uh, so much as what the narrowest point is, where the road gets pinched between the railroad, or I know that the railroad right away actually our road is impeding on the railroad right of way. And when you're involved with the railroad, they have a lot of power. And so to be to redo a road that is already in place with pretty minimal changes, they make it pre they can make it easier for you. But talking about wider scope changes within their railroad right of way uh, could be a project killer. And for a maintenance project that needs something to be done, um, this is what we can do for the moment and are certainly look open to other opportunities that could present itself for a ma more major change as part of our project down the road with Bruce Fenton. Sure, sure, sure. But I'm looking at the numbers and just some background. I spent uh, seven years working at City Minneapolis Street Design section. Um, the right away for the build right now, or the the width that you're going to use for the build right now is four feet for a shoulder, 11 foot lane, 11 foot lane, four feet for a shoulder. So that totals out to be 30 feet total that you're going to use for construction space. Mm -hmm. Isn't right away typically about 60 feet? 
typically yes, but in an area like this around the lake, it um, is certainly narrower where you have houses that were built along along the lake back in the day and we're going to throw a, a road alongside of them for access and then um, now the railroad and the highway is on the other side it's kind of it it's different than your typical 66 foot right away yeah right and, and i understand that but what i'm getting at is i would imagine somewhere in that 1.7 mile strip you have more than 30 feet of right away if you had 35 feet of right away or if you had 40 feet of right away or 40, 45 feet of roadway right away it seems you have a little flexibility to uh, uh bump a lane to the right or left two feet and put an island garden in i know it would probably be an obstruction is it an issue that plowing doesn't want to go around a a, a, a median island a garden i think that um plowing can facilitate that but uh in terms of this project just being a maintenance project any of the more like if we can't carry it throughout the entire corridor we don't want to do a bit and a piece here and there. We'd like whatever design we move forward with as part of the Bruce Vento Trail to be an overall design that will fit. We wouldn't want to put something in early and then come five years down the road to find that that design is actually in conflict with something we that works better for the overall trail. And now we go back and redo what we can. And so as in terms of this resurfacing maintenance project, our main goal is just to restore the pavement to what it was so that it could uh, last through the time needed to get through funding and agency reviews and design for the ultimate design. I, I can offer a couple of additional tidbits of information if I can have the mic for about 60 seconds. Yeah, thanks guys. I, I just called up the GIS and I've been measuring the right of way width. And what we typically have on a County Road is what Alan had mentioned for a facility like this is 66 feet. The right of way for Hugo Road varies between 47 and 32 feet in width. But the bigger issue is that Hugo Road does not stay centered within that right of way. It meanders back and forth from the east to the west side of the right of way. So if we were going to do anything that required expansion of that pavement, we may actually be leaving the right of way or cause the road to be realigned, which puts it into a reconstruction mode, which is what's going to happen with the trail in the coming years. So we'd rather tear everything up, realign it, reconstruct it, rebuild it once. So this project is aimed at just fixing a deteriorated pavement that's going to last until the until the Vento Trail comes through. And I did put a, a quick screenshot of what you're talking about, John, that I was able to dig up on GIS as well. Thank you. All right, is that, uh, I wanna move on to Beth here, who's been very patient with us and had her hand raised for some time, but thank you for your comments, Tim. All right, you should be able to unmute now, Beth. I just I was just curious because I have to admit I travel through the road every day because I can park my dog. Um, why not give us a road regard? I mean, they take took taxpayer money to repair a lot of it, and there's a train. What does it run like twice a week? Every week? Um, why don't you on the right Beth? Away? Your your audio is is breaking up quite quite a bit. Um, oh. it, it, it's, it's, I can't, can you, would yeah. you be able to type it into the chat? I did, uh, I, I actually typed oh, it into okay. the chat. Okay, so this is the question in regards to the railroad right away can take money for improvements of tracks from the taxpayers. Why not give us use of the right away? Um, the railroad being a private industry and not a government entity, um, and the fact that they own, uh, so much land um where their rails are uh they really are like a a union or a power unto themselves and they have a lot of sway into what happens on their um property uh back to you know when the original agreements with railroads were established and so um 
they'll they'll work with you but they're they're very careful as to what happens on their projects so it is um it is possible to obtain right away from them um but how much is depending on you know the safety of using their um you know they don't they don't want a train to derail and anything to happen they would prefer it if we were as far away from their tracks as possible that's why they usually have extended extensive right of ways and in our pinch point area that makes it all the more uh difficult here was there another piece to your question that you wanted to type or else i you may need to unmute again um she also asked in the chat about turn my camera on so people can see me um, asked about whether the road would be turned back to the township at some point and I'm not going to speak for the township as to whether they would accept it or not but we're going to be turning back a different county road at the end of 2022 that is being reconstructed and part of that discussion with the township was that the county is not going to fire a bunch of county roads at the township for turn back so in the short term, no, I can't speak for what the future is going to bring. What the, what the Bruce Vento Trail would do to Hugo Road or any of the other county roads around the Bald Eagle Lake area. But that's something that we're going to have to discuss with the township at a future date. Sorry, Beth. Could you try typing it? Sure. Uh, my apologies. It's unfortunate when our internet doesn't want to work with us. Uh, Beth, no, we don't. No, we don't. It, from, from a county policy on the turnbacks, if the county roads stay functioning as a county road, we're going to hold on to them. If something happens to a county road that renders it not possible to be a county road anymore, such as cul-de-sacking it, making it a one way, things like that, then we have to talk to the gaining municipality about a turn back. That's what happened on South Shore Boulevard in White Bear Lake, the project we're building this coming summer. It went from a two-way to a one-way, and counties can't operate one-way streets, so it had to get turned back to the city of White Bear Lake and White Bear Township. So we don't really know which ones will be turned back, so we don't know what the future improvements are going to wind up being on these county roads. Yeah. Thank you, Beth. Um, Bill, I see you've had your hand up for a while. I'm going to come back to you and then we can come back to Tim. I see your hand is also up again. Uh, reminder, Bill, unmute yourself. Looks like you have. Yep. And there's also oh. a question in the chat, by the way, that we need to address at some point. Yeah, so I didn't mean to have my hand up until that last column with a comment, which I found interesting because attending the trail open house, which you guys did a much better job because you actually had a presentation. Um, <laughs> versus just sheets of paper laying over the place um very 1990s um but um that you know that's an interesting comment around switching to a one-way because that was a very loudly voiced cons uh, option for the vento trail to turn hugo into a one-way which was met by the people i don't even think they worked for the county they seemed to be some consulting group that was there there basically to keep the door open and listen to us you know somewhat um but you know that if that is really an option I, I think that that should be explored as well because there seemed to be kind of some kind of resistance to making it a one way because it was a county road or yeah a county road versus saying we can switch it to a township road if it turns one way because you know same thing like you said on on the south side of white bear that that happened but just another comment around working with that trail team because in that pinch spot up by the uh, park that's the only way it's going to work without having people wandering down a two lane street at, you know, 30 miles an hour when we know no one drives that slow. So more a comment than a question, but I didn't even know my hand was still up, so I'll take it back down. <laughs> All right. 
Well, no, thanks, Bill. I uh, appreciate your comment. And at this point, um, yeah, I think that we're still very early in the Bruce Vento trail and whether or not that might happen uh, down the road is, you know, poss is a possibility. I believe, um, Luis, do we have the Bruce Vento link in the chat? Um, I think that if we follow oh. that link, it might be one of the options that was on there I'll that people there. are talking about. Yeah. Uh, can you read uh, Jay Schwartz's? Jay? Yeah, he's got two questions. He or she has two questions. Uh, I'll just go ahead and read. I, I think we're all in agreement okay, that we need we need to do this once. Have you looked at the time frames of the sewer lines under Hugo Road? They are close to needing replacement with the large amount of residential construction that has been done in Hugo. So yeah, that's a good question. Um, I know. Typically, your underground utilities are going to last a lot longer than your road surface, and so if we were to if we were to build a brand new road, that might last us 20 years. Uh, spitballing averages here, where your underground utilities could go 80 years, depending. And I think it's a measure of how many breaks uh, we've been having in the network before we would consider that. But that really is more of a, uh, a Dale Reed question with your township. So, uh, do you have any insight on that, Dale? Yeah, and I think the the line that the, they're referencing is the MCS for uh, interceptor line that the that's Met, Met Council owns. Um, that is, you know, I, I'm assuming if they did, they've done a lot of this in other communities that have been around. They'll line those. They just bypass that stuff and line, and that would be true of any of our own uh, lines. But we've been televising, monitoring the condition of our lines and. That is, you know, when it gets to a point where it would need some uh, rehabilitation, it most likely be a lining project in that area. So, like we did on the south side of uh, White Bear Lake. That helps, I hope. They put both links on the chat. Okay, thank you, Louise. Yeah, I see. Another comment from Jay Schwartz, the uh, South Shore issue would also work on Hugo Road. We'd be interested in the cul-de-sac just north of the homes. Uh, then you could turn this road over to the township. Uh, again, that could be a possibility that comes out of the uh, Bruce Vento Trail. Uh, because As early as we are with it, all options are on the table. But in terms of yeah, getting, getting the road restored, um, we weren't able to go there as part of this project, but looking toward that ultimate design uh, down the road. And and something that, that I'll concede just on that topic is the county doesn't always do the greatest job of communicating within our own departments, and we've got to do a better job on the Hugo Road, on the Vento Trail and the Hugo Road project because they're interrelated and it's going to have infrastructure impacts to the residents. So we're, we're going to do better at our communication on that. I've already talked to Scott Yonke, who's the project manager, and if Public Works is going to be included in the design development meetings and the concept meetings that are going to go on from this point forward. So we're going to have a more unified answer uh, built to your comments about holding meetings and providing information. We'll, we'll do a better job. All right, thank you, John. Um, Beth, I see that your hand is up. Did you have another question or was that possibly from the last time? I'm gonna try to unmute you here. So you can unmute yourself or if you're still having connectivity issues, if you wanted to type it in, well, you can do that. No, no, I'm just fine. I actually just made a comment that those ro the roads that you're talking about are so standard size and I thought Ramsey County didn't want standard sized road anymore. Sorry, I, I think the question was we're talking about standard sized roads, but that there wasn't I, I think she's she said in the chat these are substandard sized roads. Uh I think that was in comment to to what John had mentioned uh in regards to you know turn it over to the town township, etc. And to that I would say she's right. 
by our current standards, they are substandard sized roads. A lot of our county roads are, but we have owned them for a long time. And they retain a purpose for being under county jurisdiction. But if, like I said, if those alterations take place, then we have to have a conversation with whatever the gaining municipality is. In this case, it would be the township. So roads like Hugo and South Shore, they've been county roads pretty much for their entire existence. That's why they're, they're retained under county jurisdiction right now. All right, thank you, Beth. And with that, I, I don't see a, any hands raised and I'm scanning through the um, the comments here and uh, see if we have anything else. If anybody had any other questions uh, and wanted to raise your hands, then we can give you a call or call on you here. Um, otherwise, uh, can, uh, can you can you go to the last page that has our contact info, Alan, as we say this so they could write it down or copy it or, or whatnot? Yes, I can do that. Sorry, sorry to interrupt. No, you're fine. Yeah, so our comment information or our contact information is here on the last sheet and as well, the uh, presentation here is being recorded. It will be uploaded to the Ramsey County website uh, in the next couple of days here following our presentation. And so you can keep a lookout for that um, or if you know anybody that wasn't able to attend that would be interested is your neighbors are talking, uh, you can point them to the Ramsey County websites, future projects, Hugo Road, and we should have the information there. Um, was there any anything else that anybody had? All right, I'm hearing none. Uh, thank all of you for attending. Uh, we appreciate the turnout and uh, hope you guys have a good rest of your night. We will talk to you soon. Thank Bye. you. Bye. Thank you, Alan, John, Luis. Bye, everyone. You're welcome.